There are many different benefits to learning from flashcards, for example, space repetition and active recall. However, in this video, I'm going to go through the best method to learn from flashcards. Hey guys, it's Adoka Fintelman here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Anki and why it's so efficient and much more effective than Quizlet, Notion, or even doing your flashcards by hand. Let's get straight into it. As usual, this video will be split up into lots of different sections, so you can go check out the timestamps at either side of here, and skip to any particular section you're interested in, or just watch it all the way through, I don't mind. Anki's flashcard application focuses on learning through space repetition and active recall. This is why it's so popular with medical students, language learners, and just STEM in general. If you don't know what space repetition is, it's basically just spacing out your revision so that you are recalling that piece of information before you forget it and then it ends up going into your long-term memory. There's really good graph detailing this which I'll put up here so you can understand it a bit better. However, spatial repetition is basically just the best way to learn anything. Let's just dive into it and check how Anki incorporates space repetition to help you learn anything. So now I'm in Anki and I'm going to go into some of the stuff that Anki is really good at and why it works so well. So as you can see here, I have all these different decks for different subjects and if you click plus, you can see all the subjects that I've done sub decks for. So why Anki works so well is that, let's say I go into this subject into biology, you know, I haven't really done B9 because I haven't been doing my flashcards that much lately. However, let's just go into it and study now. Let's see, what happens during anaerobic respiration? So, I don't know. <laughs> Glucose reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. So I didn't really get that flashcard, so I'll click again. And then there's different shortcut keys for different options. So I'll press one and it'll give me that flashcard again within one minute. If I found that flashcard, you know, pretty good, then I'll just press 10. And if I found it easy, press three, you know, to get the flashcard in four days. However, I don't really click easy because if the flashcard is that easy, should I have really made a flashcard on it? No. So I press again, and then what kind of reaction is aerobic respiration? Uh, it is an exothermic reaction. There you go. So now I got that, so I'll press two and then that'll give me that question again in like 10 minutes or so so what is an exothermic reaction uh, a reaction that transfers heat to its surroundings or transfers energy to its surroundings yes so again i'll press two what is an endothermic uh, a reaction that uh, uh a reaction that absorbs energy so again i'll press one and yeah don't judge me on biology skills i've been on holiday for two weeks but yeah so you get my point when you do that anti space repetition algorithm will know when to give you that flashcard. So let's go into, you know, physics, um, a deck that I've done a lot and I guess know a decent amount. Once you've been doing cards a lot, you'll get them like, for example, I'll do this question. So how's energy transferred, you know, mechanically, electrically, thermally or by radiation? So yeah, I got that heating, or I got that. So now I'll press good because I found that good. See, I've done the flashcards so much that I won't get this for 1.5 months because I know this flashcard really well. If I found it hard, then I'll get it in 22 days. So I'll put, you know, three equals good. Again, with this next one, how do you calculate gravitational potential energy? You know, it's um, mass times by gravitational field strength multiplied by height. So boom, I got that right. And then I'll again press good. And then I won't get that flashcard for 1.7 months. So you kind of understand where I'm going with this. The more you do flashcards, the less time you'll get it in again. This is why Anki's algorithm works so well for learning stuff that's based directly on the mark scheme and that doesn't really have any leeway such as STEM subjects and many other subjects with like quotations and stuff like that. That's how I organize my decks. You can use tags to organize decks. However, I use just sub decks to organize my decks. So in case I have an exam on maybe chapter seven, I'll just click on here and only do chapter seven flashcards. So yeah, those are the basic things about Anki. In my next video, I'll go into more detail how to make image occlusion flashcard, close deletion flashcards, and more. So, but why is Anki better than Notion? Well, with Notion, you can end up using the toggle feature to write down a question and then open the toggle underneath and put down an answer. And in previous videos, I have mentioned that I do use that because I like it. It's a good feature, however, this feature doesn't allow me to review a flashcard just before I'm going to end up forgetting it. It's a pretty simple process where I have to go through each individual question so that I can get to the question I'm struggling with. However, with Anki, all the questions are like, I wouldn't say random, but they're given to you at the right time and the right place, unlike Notion. 
Also, there's some features in Anki that you can't do in Notion, such as image occlusion and, you know, closed captions, which I'll go through in my next video. These are some of the things that make Anki so powerful, which is why I wouldn't want to switch my entire library to Notion. Now, why is Anki better than Quizlet? Quizlet is really good. However, there are some things wrong with Quizlet, which I just don't like. For example, it's similar to Notion where the fact that you have to review those flashcards in kind of a linear order and it doesn't really have a space repetition algorithm. Also, I just don't like that Quizlet is online, so I can't do my flashcards offline. Over the holidays, as I was on the plane, I was doing a lot of Anki flashcards. If I had to have used Wi-Fi, then I wouldn't have been able to do that. Also, you know, if you want to do your cards in school and stuff like that, Anki's offline. So that's just really great. Another thing is that writing flashcards with Quizlet is not very efficient compared to Anki. Like with Anki, I can end up writing, you know, a whole chapter's worth of flashcards in like 20 minutes. But with Quizlet, you really have to dedicate quite a lot of time to it. Also with Quizlet, if you want to get the most out of it, you have to kind of pay for it yearly, which is £20 a year. Yeah, it's not that much, but we all enjoy free stuff. With Anki, because it's open source, anyone can write code for it, which is why there's so many great add-ons, which you would have seen like the heat map add-on letting you know how often I'm doing cards, how many cards I'm doing per day, and stuff like that, and keeping me, giving me streaks, you know, that's really nice. So now I've talked about why Anki is so much better than Quizlet and Notion, what about regular flashcards? So I have some friends who have written all of their flashcards up on pieces of card which you know i don't blame i did used to do i did go out and buy you know record cards from wa smith but there's some things wrong with this method for example you have to pay for the cards and they get kind of expensive for topics of anki i'm doing about 50 flashcards per chapter and that's you know what 10 chapters per topic average you know that's 500 flashcards 500 flashcards at like 50p per 50 flashcards is you know gonna get kind of expensive over time so with anki is obviously free because in an application and again it's a similar issue with quizlet and with notion you can't give you your flashcards just as you're about to forget it because there's no algorithm yes you can lay down your cards into you know hard easy simple whatever however with this you have to kind of give yourself the ones you found kind of difficult but not too difficult every 10 minutes while you're also giving yourself easy ones while you're also you know it kind of gets jumbled up and a bit too difficult while also having to learn flashcards with anki that's all taken care of for you which is why it's so amazing we like regular flashcards as well it's really pretty you know it looks nice you can show off to your friends you have all these amazing pretty flashcards However, with learning, it's it's not supposed to be pretty. You're just supposed to learn the information. Just like with notes and stuff like that. I used to, like a long time ago, make my notes really pretty with, you know, brush pens and stuff like that. However, that's just a big waste of time. Think about it. It takes you maybe two minutes to write a title. You end up writing 200 notes and maths, two minutes times 200 pages, you know, it's just a big waste of time. In that time, I could have written way more notes with the time I would have been used doing a brush pen title. There's no point in making your flashcards pretty or making it aesthetic to your friends. You just have to be able to learn from it well. I said in many of my other videos, loads and loads of people and medical YouTubers use Anki, you know, all of these people are learning from Anki. With Anki, yes, it's something you need to dedicate a fair bit of time to. Like I usually probably spend every day like two hours going through all my flashcards, but that's for literally every single subject and it's worth it in the end because I'm able to recall lots of information when I need to. There are some downsides to Anki, for example, the learning curve to it. I had to watch Ali Abdal's Skillshare course, which is like a four hour course, just to learn how to use Anki and use it well. However, I'm making a video which will be out in like the next three to four days, all about how to use Anki's features and how I use it and how I learn as efficiently as possible from it. So I put out a poll on my Instagram asking, you know, my followers for any questions they might have on Anki. So if you want to be part of that kind of thing in the future, make sure to go follow my Instagram so you're up to date with all I'm doing. So let's go through some of these questions that people have asked me. Is it better to put a question and answer or just really condense info so it's easier to remember? The best thing to do is just put as less information as possible. For that kind of stuff, you should be really doing exam questions for longer answers or putting into Notion like I do. For like facts that you kind of need to know, especially in subjects like science, you need to know a lot of like facts and answers to questions. You don't want to be putting a lot because that's just going to jumble around in your mind. So don't put condensed notes. Also, I don't recommend taking notes. It's just a waste of time. I will make a video further explaining my reasoning for this. However, don't make notes. Don't put condensed notes on flashcards. Make 
as less information as possible or just like kind of split those notes into lots of different flashcards. Next question is how to reduce the time taken to make Anki flashcards. Probably don't listen to music, don't watch any TV shows in the background, just focus on the cards. Um, use shortcuts, there's loads of keyboard shortcuts on Anki such as you know command enter stuff like that to make the flashcards as well as many 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 other shortcuts which you know there'll be linked websites uh, to check out those shortcuts which can make making Anki flashcards so much easier. Um, don't be afraid to like copy and paste or screenshot images. I know when I've been having to put down formulas for like stuff that I need to remember, I've just gone on Google or looked at the textbook and screenshotted it. So don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to waste your time writing out stuff. How to make questions from a textbook. Uh, well, I'll go through that in the next video on Anki. So make sure to subscribe so you can be notified when that video comes out. Do you have to get web extensions or just sign up? Um, no, you don't have to get a web extension. You just download the application and can make your account and then download the app on your phone and it will be synced very easily. So this is a good question. What is the main use of it? The main use of Anki is kind of just to get that foundation to your knowledge and the information that you need to know. So with Anki, I do not recommend making flashcards when you haven't learned the information. You know, I don't recommend it. Don't do it at all. Just don't do it. You have had to have learned the information a little bit or just like gone through the chapter. That way you know what to make flashcards on. So the main use of it again is just active recall and to provide that foundation to your learning because once you do those Anki questions and you know, go through flashcards and learn the information. You can apply that information to practice papers and stuff like that. What are the best subject to use on, in my opinion? Um, you can use it for every subject, but the best subjects are probably science and languages because vocab is super easy on there. And you know, science is heavily based on just knowing what the mark scheme wants you to put down. But in religious studies, you can use this to remember specific facts, you know, for Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, and stuff like that, as well as quotes from people. Again, with English, it's similar to poetry, it's similar with poetry. You can use it to learn quotes, and again, similar with books you're studying, such as Blood Brothers or Christmas Carol. I also like to use it for computer science to so again, learn specific information because that's also heavily based on the mark scheme. How to prevent writing down too much? Focus on thinking like, how can I write as little as possible about this? With Anki, I never ever really put down that a question was easy. So if you're putting down a question was easy, it does not need a flashcard made on it. When you're going through the textbook, Look at that piece of information and will you remember that? Like, do you clearly know that before having had read that chapter or read that part of the text? If you already knew that, don't make a flashcard in it. Don't make a flashcard on, you know, what is H2O? Like, obviously you've known that it's, you know, hydrogen and oxygen. Just like you wouldn't make a flashcard on, you know, where is the heart? Well, obviously it's between the ribs. So, you know, stuff like that, that you know is super easy, don't make a flashcard on. Make a flashcard on something that you like kind of don't know and thought when reading that part of the textbook, wow, yeah, I didn't know that. Is the app worth downloading? Um, yeah, it is, because it's amazing, like I've just said in this whole video. If this hasn't convinced you, you know, watch any other person's video, however, hopefully the point of view of a, a year 10 student doing their GCSEs next year has helped convince you that it is an app that's worthwhile downloading. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and follow me on your socials. If you like videos about studying and stuff like that, check out this playlist full of videos all about studying. Have a productive week.